How's it going everyone? Welcome to today's Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets PC video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, custom port of a map from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone to the Chamber of Secrets. Um, this is actually the Fapendo challenge from the Philosopher's Stone game if you've played that. Um, if you haven't I will leave a link in the description to a video of mine where I have played the Philosopher's Stones for Bendo Challenge so you can see what it originally looks like versus what it looks like in this uh, port of it. Um, this was ported over by a fellow community member known as Andrew Baldwin who has done a lot of awesome stuff in the Harry Potter um, PC gaming community. I'm a big fan of his work quite frankly and I'm looking forward to doing a lot of videos about his work and putting them up on the channel because um, he does some crazy stuff with these games and it's great it's awesome to see and I hope he continues to do it throughout all these years quite frankly um, so what we're going to do is we're going to play this level all the way through so you can see what it looks like in the Chamber of Secrets on PC and then at the end I will quickly use debug mode and have a look around outside of the map and just see if there are any cool little secrets hiding out and about and what I will also do at the end is give my own personal view of what I think of this port and, you know, just some general comments of it overall. Hopefully they might be used to help improve it maybe in the future, you never know. Anyway, let's go through it. So I'm looking forward to this. Also, we'll have the custom music from the first game as well in this, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So this is where you would start off, and you would normally talk to Quirrell over here, and then you would have a barrel that you would normally uh, push down here. In the case of this one, we don't have a barrel, and I can already tell that there's normally meant to be a little dip in this wall here, where that barrel would sit, but we're not having that in this version. And then this is the part where you meet Quirrell down here. And he talks to you about basically how you can cast a bendo on these little cauldrons. And yeah. Then you can obviously cast at this. And then that will show you the uh, gate opening. Here's the first challenge star. It's nice to see he's kept the challenge stars in. I like that. Here's the bridge. And then here's the Fapendo sign. Will that move the bridge? Yes, it does. That's impressive. Now let's take a look down here quick. Okay, so there's the pit. Normally you wouldn't be able to see all the way down because there'd be like a blacky fog down there and so on. Um, so that's pretty cool. Unlike in the cage. I wonder if he's programmed in the staircase bit. Oh, he has. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's good to see that return. I actually thought he might not bring that back, but he did. That's really cool. I like it. And of course you've got a new challenge star here. And then we come in here and this is where nearly at this Nick would normally talk to you. This famous little speech about, you know, safe game books. <laughs> So normally nearly had this Nick would walk into this wall here and on Philosopher's Stone you can actually see through the wall. I doubt you will be able to hear because you weren't meant to before. Nah, you can't hear. I wonder if it will be there. I'll have a look at the end and see. Um, but yeah, you used to be able to see nearly had this Nick going to the wall which is basically where he just stands for a while. Um, it's where he comes out of and then it's what he goes back into. Okay, so this is where you can obviously hit all of these and activate this gate. Yep, that's still there. That's cool. Very nice to see. You've obviously got the cauldron. And then you would see Quirrell again and he would talk to you about moving blocks. Quirrell would be here. And here's the block. Feels so much nicer with the uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets jumping system and things as well. <laughs> like this feels like the, this feels like it should be really. But there you go. Some people are a big fan of the uh, Philosopher's Stone's jump system and spell casting system. I must confess, I really hate it. 
I always did kind of hate it. Um, I didn't mind it, I suppose, but it felt very clunky. Could have been much better. So this should open this up here. Yep. Yeah. You can get the challenge start. And then you've got a block there. Now we're going to move on to this part where you've got these blocks all uh, moving about. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. It's interesting, you can see the floor in this version because he hasn't got the fog flex or anything on again. And that's fine, I mean, I can kind of expect that. It's cool. And that should open the gate and activate that. Yep, there we go. The attention to detail, this is impressive. I mean, granted, it, it is a port of the uh, original map, but it's still impressive. Because I know he must have had to change a few things in here to make them work. Must have done. Very nice. Oh. oh, that's nice, because in uh, Fosbo you couldn't really do that. You kind of could, but it was pretty, um, it was a bit heavy. So the thing that you don't notice there is the visual effect. Um, I'll talk more about it at the end, but normally there, I believe it's up there. You normally have like two sides of that uh, challenge star where you've got the beans on either side, but they have specific colour on the floor and the wall um, so you've got one side that's kind of blue and then you've got one side that's red or orangey red or something like that from my memory <laughs> um, but yeah there you go it'll be interesting to see what he does with the gnomes actually okay so the, the Harry Potter 2 gnomes normally in the first one the gnomes you just hit them on the floor and that's it and if they stole your beans, you couldn't get them back. Here, I expect what will happen is he will either do the same or he's going to throw them into a gnome hole. Okay, so I can still craft them and I can pick them up. So yeah, like Harry Potter 2. Up oh, and there's the gnome hole. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> the name's on fire. <laughs> I, I might let that know, just get up. <laughs> so, normally in the Philosopher's Stone, oh dear, there uh, wouldn't be a gnome hole there at all. It would normally just be a wall with a challenge star there. Um, let's try that. Can I pick you up? There we go. Ooh, has he actually made it? Oh, wow, yes. That's good. That's impressive, actually. Throw that away. And there we go. Get the last beam. And then, normally you would have Quill here talk to you about collecting all the challenge stars, and that would be it. Obviously, we haven't got Quill here. Instead, we've got the challenge star. A big one, like in Harry Potter 2, which is pretty cool. Um, right, so what we're going to do now, before we pick that up, is we're just going to look around uh, the map of debug mode. Yeah, there's already a secret area. Um, oh, actually, I wonder if that's the common room. Because normally at the end of this level you get a cutscene with Harry, Ron and Hermione and that in the common room. I just want to have a quick look at this chip. That's so cool. It's like tiny little additions like this that are always nice to see. Ooh, what's going on in here? Interesting. Models of the doors. Hmm. So yeah, we've got this little room in here with door assets, which is cool. Um, these are the sort of things you see in the PC Harry Potter games, these little rooms that store all the assets and things, it's, it's pretty cool. It's interesting though that there's a whole room just for doors. <laughs> huh. But for 
enough. Well, anyway, there you go. There's a room with doors. Now, I'm interested in this area. Let's have a walk around in it if we can. That we can, cool. Oh, that's looking uh, interesting. <laughs> so, this looks like the common room. Is it the common room? Yes, yes, it is. So normally at the end of Philosopher's Stone's Perpendo Challenge you would have a little cutscene in here. You would not be able to walk around in it, I might add. It would just be a cutscene that you briefly get before going to the flying lesson. Uh, and this bit would be the Flat Lady's portrait that they would walk out of. Um, this is the main common room area. There would normally be like a sofa here, a table I think over here. Uh, I think there was another table back there. Trying to remember now. It's been a little while. Interesting floor texture, I like it. There would normally be a fire going on here as well. Um, but yeah, interesting because that would normally have a little staircase, I think, that would go up. Yeah, because then you'd be able to go up here if you were a student, and you would have both of the dormitories over here and also over here yeah interesting how bouncy the stairs are <laughs> I like it <laughs> anyway that's cool it's nice to see that it's still here obviously it's not used because there's no cutscenes and things in this but it's nice to see it's still here so is there anything else so that's where we started Interesting. Ooh, what's this? Ah, is this just a room for holding the general texture? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it looks like it. I think that's just the room for holding the texture of the entire map looks like it to me. Uh, right, so underneath the bridge, you've got this giant pit. Can you walk around in it? Oh, we can. That's cool. Normally you wouldn't even see in this pit, I might add. You would normally just have a load of fog or whatever in the uh, pits. You wouldn't be able to see anything. I'm still uh, intrigued by a lot of this extra stuff outside the map. It's cool. Uh, where's nearly here this next bit? Yeah, so it's here. Yeah, okay, he hasn't put it in here because no need to. Um, that's cool. This bit, which is probably not a good idea for me to walk around in here, I feel like I will die. Because um, it's programmed that you will die in there, not so much over there. Uh, and I totally trust the fact that he would have made it so that you die if you go in there. Because that is exactly what should happen. Anything else? Anything else hidden about? Don't think so. And you've obviously got the gnome hole. Uh, yeah. Hope oh, that's it. Okay. I must say that this is very accurate to the original Fapendo challenge in Philosopher's Stone on PC. Big fan of this one actually. I always like this challenge, and actually, it feels much better in the Chamber of Secrets engine with the whole be able to jump properly in my opinion it's properly anyway um spell casting's nicer obviously in this as well and in general it feels a lot smoother when you're going through it uh what we don't get to see much of in this and again i get it's not the easiest thing to pull over every texture and things is color i think that's the one thing i could really say that this doesn't quite have much of is colour. While the map looks accurate as hell to what it used to look like basically, uh, it's all one texture effectively in most areas. There's obviously a couple of textures here and there and other bits but there's a lot of the same texture around and uh, I don't know, it's, it's lacking the dynamic uh, colour that we saw in the past but it's not a big horrendous deal, it's just a point that I like to make there. Uh, Otherwise, the only other thing is you've got a couple of visual effects as well, like the foggy, dark bits and the pits that you would normally see in the previous one, which you don't see here. 
because um, it's, it's just the ground here, um, which would have been cool to see, but again, not a big deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not really much else I can say about this other than it is actually a lot of fun to play. It's very well made, good port, and actually, I'm impressed. I really like this. Also, love the addition of the challenge style system in this one with uh, Chamber of Secrets' as challenge style system instead, especially with this big challenge style that we have here. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's really not much more I need to say. Uh, it would have been nice, actually, I will point this out, it would have been nice to see the gnomes kind of in the same way, but I mean, it's on HB2 system. Gnomes are programmed in a specific way, so it's fine. That's kind of what you expect. And it's cool that he gets thrown in the gnome hole in the middle of a Fabendo challenge anyway. I like it. But yeah, it would have been cool to have heard them at least when they get knocked down making their weird sound effects. Because that was always kind of funny. But again, I'm not going to mock it much. It's not a big deal. I can live without it. <laughs> yeah, personally, I thought it was really cool. And uh, I like the addition of the common room area as well that was good uh yeah nothing more to say really so i'm gonna finish off by walking into the challenge star and completing the level anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys want to download this map for yourself i'll leave a link to it down in the description of the video uh if you need a tutorial at all in the future about how to put these mod maps onto this game and actually figure out how to play them I will create a tutorial for you guys so you know how to do that. And uh, yeah, go and give Andrew Baldwin some support. He does some great stuff. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description as well. And uh, go, go and check it out. He, he does some great Harry Potter videos, all sorts of crazy things. And quite frankly, is probably the most dedicated Harry Potter uh, PC fan out there. He's pretty damn dedicated. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. See you then. Complete the challenge!